Hi, Chris here. Thanks for stopping by my channel, All Time Jack. Today I'm going to be making a custom machine tag for my drill press that I've just recently restored. This is the program I designed in Vectric. It's pretty simple. There is somewhat of a learning curve if you're not used to this sort of thing though. How to design in the software, what bits to use, speeds and feeds. It can be a giant speed bump in your fun. You kind of just got to dedicate yourself, practice, and uh, mess some things up till you get them right. Here's a few things we'll be using for setup and uh, to secure the aluminum to the base. There's the old tag. This is very thin 025 aluminum. Uh, so we want to get it really nice and flat. So we're going to use the tape and CA glue. We'll tape down to the base there, and I'm not overlapping that tape. I'm taking the time and buttoning them right up next to each other as seamlessly as possible. We'll get this last piece on here, trim it up a little bit just to make it easier to work with, a little bit easier to see. We'll get the CA glue in the middle here, put the activator down, and get busy. So you want to make sure to get very good coverage on especially something this thin like this because with what we're doing, if you get off just the slightest bit, it could show up in the final product. Same reason to make sure not to overlap the tape. Also, same reason to make sure your work surface is true to your machine before you start, which I have surfaced previously with the surfacing bit. Okay, we got a good amount of glue on there. We're going to get some activator on there. I'm just going to set her down, and I got really lucky and pressed it down, and it was dead on. And what I normally do is I'll get it pressed down, and then I'll check my alignment again, and I will we'll loosen those clamps if I have to and square it up. And now here is just the bits we're going to use. The blue one is a monotools bit, and that bit right there is a Widget Works diamond drag. That is a very super cool bit. And uh, here we're just going to get it squared up, find our center point, and put a little mark on there. And I'll put links in the description down to the bits. Uh, some of the bits are just pretty cheap bits you get on Amazon. Not the cheapest, but fairly cheap. Um, but I do like to use the, some good bits for some things. And then if the cheap bits work, sometimes I'll go ahead and order some, you know, some name brand of that kind. And here we are, centered up. If you don't have a piece of styrofoam or something to put under your spindle, get one. It's a very good idea. Even though this one, this bit in here is small, it doesn't fall out. But the bigger they get, they will fall out. Sometimes the small ones will when you take them loose. And you can just let them fall out. They'll dive right into the styrofoam. No harm. Get this bit in here. Get it zeroed out for our height. These touch plates are amazing. If you don't have one, you can use the piece of paper trick. We'll have to do that on the diamond drag bit. Now we're zeroed and we can get started. This is a profile toolpath with a 60 degree V bit. It's gonna do the model and serial number and then a profile around the edge and then the little circles around the R for the Rockwell. I did not know how this was going to work out. I found the feed and the speed and plunge and everything pretty quickly, and it worked out amazing. So you can't see it real clearly yet, but that's obviously the model and the serial number, but it also says model number and serial number, and now it's doing the perimeter around it. But those, where it says model number and serial number is about an eighth of an inch or less in height. And it's crystal clear. The reason I didn't do all of this with the diamond drag engraving bit 
is I wanted a little bit more depth for the paint that we'll be putting on it later. And you'll kind of see what I'm talking about in just a second when we do the engraving uh, inside the, the circles. Here's the diamond drag bit. This is the one you have to uh, set with a piece of paper. The uh, touch plate doesn't work to set your Z height. This bit is just fabulous. Get you one, man. They are pricey, though. Get both bits, too. You can get them with a half-inch shank or a quarter-inch shank, and that thing splits in two, and it comes with two different springs, but it only comes with one bit, and that's a 120-degree bit. But for not that much money at all, you can order the second insert, which is the 90-degree bit, which allow you to do some really intricate, fine detail. The leaves in the bottom of that circle are about a sixteenth of an inch, and it laid them down perfectly. Now we're going to swap over to the tapered angle ball nose 2D, 3D engraving bit for the pocket toolpath. This just worked out amazing. I thought I was going to have a lot of time involved getting speeds and feeds and finding the right bit. Uh, this was the second bit that I tried, and the feeds and the speeds and everything, I just adjusted once or twice maybe, and that was it. And it just turned out amazing. Again, this is very thin aluminum. This is .025. You gotta pay a lot of attention to the bits you use, the feeds and speeds, and you'll notice up at the top where I started the video, uh, it looks a little rough on the cutout up there. Uh, and that's because that is the one I got wrong. Although that tag turned out beautiful and perfect, I had to sand it down a little bit, but the, I got the cut out a little bit wrong. So it, I changed the bit and the feeds and speed on this one and everything was just perfect. And uh, I'll post them in the description, the bits that I use, the feeds and speeds and plunge and a couple other things. But as usual, you gotta understand that that's, it's just a generalization. It's different for everybody in different environments or they may work perfectly for you, or you might find better ones. Um, I actually would think I could get this to go faster, but I just kind of started at these settings right here and made one adjustment and it everything was just fine, so I ran with it. Aluminum is very, very tricky. and I mean, any of this is, is tricky, but aluminum is incredibly problematic and uh, lots of people try to stay away from it. Justifiably so. I really wanted to make this new tag though for my drill press that I've just restored because it was just horrible. And it turned out so beautiful and so good that I, I didn't want to put the old tag back on it because I couldn't get it clean without uh, damaging it. Uh, and that video will be coming up here in a couple of weeks. The whole full restoration. Now we're swapping over to uh, 1 8 end mill. Uh, on a profile tool path, not a drill tool path. It's a profile path with the uh, ramp set to spiral and inside left. Drill out the rivet holes. And now with that same 1 8 end mill, we're on uh, outside right on the tool path for the cutout. You can see this one cut out a little bit better than the first one. We're gonna leave a couple of tabs, basically an onion skin. Now we're just going to take it loose, take it over in the other room, sand it down just a little bit and get it ready for paint. Just knocking it down here with some 320 just a little bit and then gonna go over a little bit just to smooth it out get those little ridges and edges off now if you want a pretty cool looking frosted look you can just hit it with the sander and leave it at that I just wanted this one to be a little shinier Now this is a lot of fun. These are little bitty tiny little numbers and letters and uh, I gotta have me some help with the eyes. 
I don't use this visor much, but it comes with replaceable lenses or interchangeable lenses. And, uh, man, it's hard to get used to, but when, when you kind of get used to it, it's, it's a lifesaver. Just about got it ready for the red here. Put a little red on it. Let it dry. Going to pull it off, and you can kind of see where we're going with this. I'm using this radius gauge or circle gauge to find the right size that I need to cut out a piece of tape. It's kind of a pain in the butt because it's so small, but that little R that's in the center of that circle is very close to the perimeter lines. And it's going to be really fine adjustment there to get that on there just right. Here we go with some white. And some blue. I'm going to let those dry up. Take it off and kind of starting to look pretty neat there. Now we're going to see if we can get that little sucker on that R. And um, it was an accident, but I nailed it. Now we got a couple of little more on the USA over there. Now we're ready for the black. Now after letting that cure up, we'll pull all of this off. Sand her down a little bit and see what we got. Could have used lacquer sticks here, but I really wanted to try the paint. Here we go. It really starting to come to life here. And I'm just sanding up. I think I sanded all the way up to 800 from 240. Uh, just lightly. And I think I finished it off with just the steel wool that I'm kind of using there as a backer. Put some clear on it. And man, look at that. It just came alive. Now, have you a lot of patience right here? Just be very patient and a little bit at a time. Uh, this is real thin aluminum and really easy to bend or warp. Right here as well, peeling that tape off could roll that thin aluminum over pretty easy if you're not careful. Now we'll just cut out the tabs with some scissors. It's thin enough. Those are some industrial shears, by the way. They're not just normal scissors, but it's still pretty thin. Kind of smooth out the edges. Uh, that's either 600 or 800. I can't remember what I'm doing that with. If you don't have a bag of corks, go get you a bag of corks. You'll see in the drill press video on the restoration video there how handy these things can be now we're going to throw a little more clear around the edges and I guess a little more on the top and here's the rivets I ordered these are the kind of rivets that come in these back way back then um, they're screw in rivets but I ordered the wrong size. I thought I had the right size, but I ordered the wrong size. So I'm going to have to put the old ones back in. And there they are. And they're kind of ugly, but they're holding it on there for now till I get the right size rivets. But it sure did turn out amazing. I'll put a lot of information in the description below. Speeds and feeds and bits and paints and stuff that I used. I'll have a lot of content coming up soon in the future. I was just going to do woodworking on this channel, but I do so many different things. I just decided to combine it all into this channel. 
I'll have a wide variety of projects and content coming soon. Thanks for watching. Be sure and look for the restoration video of this drill press here in a couple of weeks. Like and subscribe if you like this sort of thing. And see you next time.